The Pulse of Spokane is a broad show that showcases many different things in our community, sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Homes for You. Well, welcome to this Thursday edition of The Pulse of Spokane. Kent Adams here, and we have a great guest coming up after the break, and that's uh, Greg Deckard. Uh, with State Bank out in the valley. They are a community bank and perhaps more importantly to all of us right now, they've been very involved in the PPP uh, loan issue and so forth. And so you're going to hear what's going on, what has gone on the last couple months, but maybe more importantly, what is going on right now. So we'll get an update right after this break. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we want to help you help your fathers and grandfathers. How many times have you seen them get a bigger workout just trying to get the equipment started? They crank, they crank, they crank, they crank, they crank, they crank and never get started. We have a battery operated. You just throw that battery in, run it, pull the trigger, you're ready to roll. No workout, all fun, getting the garden done. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we want to help you make your dad's day and your grandfather's day. Neighbors helping neighbors at River Ridge Hardware. I'm former Washington State Representative Leonard Christian. And since I left office, the budget has almost doubled and the governor signed comprehensive K-12 sex education into law. He's also abused his emergency powers. I'm asking for your support to help me return to Olympia so that I can protect businesses and families. I'm Leonard Christian, the reasonable right candidate, and I ask for your vote. Paid for by Leonard Christian for State Representative, Republican. Well, joining me is Greg Deckard of State Bank Northwest, isn't it? Did I get that yes. right? Yep. Yep, okay. You did. So I've got to ask about your life the last couple of months because we've all been doing everything differently. We've been working at home. Uh, how, how has it been? How have you staffed your bank during this period of time? Well, Kent, it's great to be with you today. Um, we've been trying to get together for a long time, yeah. I know, and, and COVID came along and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm still working remotely. When we first started talking about getting together, we were going to talk about the testimony that I had in front of Congress last year regarding cannabis or me becoming the treasurer of ICBA, which is our National Independent Community Bankers Association. And that's, that's old, old news, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so we're on to uh, COVID and uh, <laughs> physical distancing, I am. But uh, our bank has remained open in the lobbies and drive throughs the entire time. Okay. Um, and taking lots of special precautions. Of course. But one yeah. of the things that we looked at being the second oldest bank in the state of Washington. Oh, really? Um, in 1902, was that we were. I remember when you started. Do you now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we were one of the few banks that never closed a single day during the Great Depression. And so when we looked at COVID and the the, the lobby traffic and feedback from our staff and everything else, we just decided that we would implement extra precautions, um, extra sanitation and everything else, but keep our lobbies open, kind of with that consistency of never being closed during the depression. We weren't going to let COVID uh, right. do that. As long as our staff was healthy and, and the workplace was uh, safe, then, uh, then we've stayed open. Little did we know that during some of that period of time of staying open, it would be pretty much 24 hours a day trying to process the SBA and Treasury's uh, PPP program. Yes. Yeah, I've got to say, one of your slogans, and I know it from walking into the bank in the past and so forth, has been, you know people by their name. Yes. So yes. it's your family that's coming in to deal with their checking account or their debit card or whatever. And that was probably very important as they would go through the drive through and, and, and the lobby and so forth to see a friendly face. I think it was very calming for them to still have yeah. their financial institution open. Um, you know, this is not a banking crisis. And in 2008, 2009, that was a banking crisis. This right. was created by the worldwide pandemic, where banks right now as an industry are very healthy, lots of capital and liquidity, that it was important for us to communicate, hey, we're still here, we're strong, we're open, 
right. and uh, business as usual as much as we can be. Okay. Along comes um, the U.S. Congress. They pass uh, PPP. The president signs it. There's a couple to million dollars, billion dollars out there that I think some of it went pretty darn fast and even to some yeah. larger businesses that probably should not yeah. have gotten it. But um, what did you do as a bank, as the CEO there? What action did you take? So I would take a step back even before that and talk about um, my position at ICBA as the national okay. treasurer. We were working with Senator Marco Rubio's staff three weeks before the CARES Act was passed, oh, wow. having input into the legislation and really what small businesses needed. And um, as many things happened, the program was well-intentioned, um, lined out to be simple. The banks were gonna be the conduit of which this stimulus money could go to small business to keep people on the payroll and off unemployment, right? right. But as we've all seen, um, the, the actual rollout from Treasury and SBA has been somewhat problematic. Again, it's been a good program. I think the latest statistics I read this weekend were that seven out of 10 businesses, small businesses, were able to take advantage of the program. Oh. And in Washington State, that's about 60% of all small businesses that have participated. But what's happened is that the lack of clarity, the rulemaking, um, the, the conflicts, of the program and not having every detail, then we were really struggling with our small businesses, trying to, to give them guidance as to how to navigate through the changing programs, right. um, how to implement that, how to prepare for the ultimate forgiveness. And so it really has been uh, a challenge for our people at our, at our bank, 30 team members. We processed um, about $55 million wow. in PPP loans. Uh, we were a $150 million bank before this started. We're over $200 million now. Did not expect that kind of uh, rapid growth, but fortunately, uh, we're very conservative, so we've had the capital and liquidity to fund that ourselves without any of the other programs that have been made available out there. But I think the thing I'm most proud of of our 30 employees yes. is that we've affected over 5,500 jobs in our state. Wow. Um, and when you look at what a small community bank can do, we processed every single application, customer or non-customer, uh, in round one. And then when that money went, ran out quickly, then we were really prepared for round two with some additional technology. And in the first 24 hours of round two, had every one of, of the ones that were in the pipeline uh, processed. And still today, we're turning around the same day with the remaining $130 uh, billion or so is what's left in the fund. But as you mentioned and alluded to, the the tide shifted from this being a very good program to then you had the Los Angeles Lakers and and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse and some large publicly traded companies that, that participated. And then all of a sudden it created a bunch of fear for every small business. Yes. Do I need it? What do I have to document? And it was totally different than the certifications and attestations that they need to make in the simple application going in. The bank relied on that. We did all this processing, and now all of a sudden you've got the back and forth of, oh my gosh, uh, what do we have here? Are they going to come back after this whole thing's over and and uh, audit every small business? I even had our largest PPP loan, um, bona fide single individual impacted by COVID, withdraw over a $7 million loan just by fear of, of what was going to happen after the fact. And, and so it's, it's been problematic. But overall, when I look at the number of businesses that have been impacted, we've had 4,500 institutions in the country that have participated in, in rolling this out and all the resources and everything. It makes us very proud to yes. have played a small part in, in a program like this. And, and you alluded to, to this, and that's the constant changing and updates from the federal government and, and so forth. And what you just told the client an hour ago, you get the report of something that's that's changed, and, and, and now you got to call them back and update what's – I mean, it, it's nuts, yeah. nuts, if you will. And I saw some – I won't mention banks like Chase and others, but they were working with some very large – of clients of theirs to get in and and kind of w wiggle their way in before some of some of the uh, smaller companies and we know it's the yeah. mom and pop uh, operations and so forth that have a few employees that are the most vulnerable and don't have the access to capital and and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you helped fifty five hundred jobs. 
That's probably only part of it because by your helping those think about the the effect they had on other people and their buying power and and so forth. So it, you guys should be very proud of what you accomplished. You know we are, and that's always been I think what, how we look at community banking. It's more of a relationship based model than than a transaction model. And I, I think the PPP was. Um, never been a time that's been more evident of why you should know your banker, yes. know who the owner of the bank are and the, and the local board, because there were so many borrowers that were left without any communication from their large bank. And they did their share. Right. Um, I think they had more problems at the outset than, than some. But um, for us to be having the phone ring from clients of other banks, who can't even get an answer and for us to be able to turn around and in one day we've got clients for life now yes and again it, it really is you know knowing our customer by name and and having a relationship with them and people understood the difference but now all of a sudden when they've experienced it our, they appreciate the difference yes right yes yeah. so what's next what are we what are we you said money until the end of end of june which is only a couple of weeks away or less than that now um is that expected to go to to be drawn out before the end of the month or do you think pretty much you know people will still have in 10 days from now a, a good chance to get in so lots of lots of changes from uh q and a's and other interim financial rules that have come out since the cares act was passed i think on march 27th right. we rolled out the very first day we could do loans was was uh april 6th and so pretty much from from a couple of weeks before when we knew it was coming until now, it's been, you know, all the focus on, on PPP. Um, one of the things that we said from the very beginning was an eight week period to spend the money. Loan amounts are still calculated today as they were at the very beginning. It's two and a half times an average monthly payroll. Right. Um, loan amounts still the same, but in within eight weeks of being able to disperse that money for those eligible uses and get forgiveness was way too tight. And so, Last week, uh, Congress packed, passed the um, PPP Flexibility Act, which now gives borrowers up to a 24-week period ah, okay. to use the money for payroll, particularly in the state of Washington, where we had um, you know businesses closed longer than the rest of the country. Then it was really difficult. Well, in various bring. areas, being able to go to level three and four and so Correct. forth. So yes, so the 24 weeks was something that we were lobbying very hard for from the very beginning. That's part of that. I have um, heard that. So that's great. Was always to be used for payroll costs okay. um, at a minimum, which some companies were having a hard time um, achieving that ratio because people weren't coming back or they weren't eligible to open. That's right. been lowered 60%. So more people are going to qualify for forgiveness. Um, and as long as they've used it for those eligible purposes, then, then we expect um, that to be um, uh, more clear. Yeah. And the processes they're still rolling out, how to apply for forgiveness and what the processes are, that's looking pretty onerous. But again, with that extension of time, and I think that gives Treasury a little bit more time and the SBA to, to clarify what those rules are. So main things are, if you're still using the money for what the intended purposes were, you should be and okay. if you look at it, like I've looked at the intent, the intent was for the federal government to use the banking system to roll out a stimulus. They also use the small business owner as a vehicle to roll out that stimulus to their employees. Right. And so it's, it's different in, in, in saying, here's this forgivable money, 100% forgiven to you, small business owner. If you use it for these purposes, everybody went in with the intent that it was going to be 100% in, 100% out. We still operate with that, but the, the devil's always in the details, right? Of course. And in this case, the details have been confusing and ever changing and so we'll get through it but in the end you know when you look at at um at the two levels of of stimulus that has gone out and the impact it had even in the jobs report with two and a half million new jobs yes. and everything else you know I, th I think that this program will play a huge role in having it be a more of a a v-shaped recovery than than without it Right. Well, one of the things I've said uh, for months or at least a couple of months now is that we really have had two viruses, the COVID-19, of course, that is yeah. the medical one. But we've also had 
uh, an economic one, and um, people's jobs and feeding their families and everything else that goes with that are so dependent on their going to work every day, whether it be yeah. at home or wherever, but I mean, being yeah. able to work. And so uh, I, I, it was good to see some recent job reports and, and that the numbers are going up, not down. I sit on a community bank round table for Visa and they have unbelievable data that is so granular. You know, you can just drill down to what segment of the economy and everything else. I think it was April cardholder spend was down 38%. Wow. May it was down 18% and they're already seeing a rebound in spend now. Okay. So I'm hoping that some confidence comes back and as people yeah. come back to work that, that, um, you know, we'll see the, re the economy uh, recover much faster and, and certainly the PPP program with all of its problems. Um, Without as, as yeah, mm -hmm. without naming the company, unless you want to, the little business, can you give me, give our audience an example of what difference the, the money made with one of your, with one of your folks? Oh my gosh! I mean, we are tracking all of the stories, and yeah. you know, might put a book together or something of, of um, the responses we've got from the smallest loan that we did, which is nine hundred and fifty-five dollars. Oh wow! to, to uh, the, the largest loan that we did that wasn't getting back, like I mentioned on that one, is 2.8 million, 400 employees in that company. Um, the stories are so varied from, you know, people, you call them on the phone and you say you're approved and you've got that golden ticket of the SBA authorization number yeah. that they're crying, you know, yeah. saying, geez, I've got 15 people that are relying on me and everything yeah. else. So um, many stories of us, all industries of, of how um, you know, just save their the business. Doesn't that just warm your heart to, to know that you've helped these folks? I mean, because think of the, think of the responsibilities all of us have, whether we own our businesses or are the CEO or chairman of the board or whatever it might be, to our employees. You know, sometimes they may not think that, but we do care about our employees, and to be able to say yes, we can continue to pay you and so forth. What a difference that makes. Yeah, I mean, we are part of the community. Our ownership is here. Um, yeah. Been 1902, started in Garfield. So we've got five generations of farmers that have yes. been banking with us. So we've seen the ups and downs of what happens in agriculture. And the farmer, the small farmer, really wasn't until the very tail end of the PPP program that they clarified that they could apply. Oh, so wow. we're still here today right now. Um, in our ag branch, um, processing PPP loans for, for small farmers. So, um, yeah, it is gratifying. And I know that every one of our 30 employees, whether they were directly involved or having to take calls because of all the other resources we allocated to just doing that, they have all played a role. And everybody has gotten some feedback from a customer of what an important role we played. So it, it, I, I, I'm so proud of our staff. Well, and that makes working hard worth it doesn't it when you know you yeah. help somebody out there on a family and a business and unfortunately i know of some businesses and you do too probably that have had to fold we've seen the stories in the yeah. paper and on the news and so forth and we've got to prevent the rest of them uh, it limits our choice in terms of where we go for restaurants and who we do business with it affects the owner and the employees, and in some cases, uh, you know this probably better than I do, who, uh, folks who have put a second mortgage on their homes to start their business and to keep it going and so forth that are absolutely worried uh, whether they can continue to survive and so forth. And we've got to do whatever we can by patronizing them and going to their place of business and buying things, whether it's drive by and, and pick up a meal or uh, order something on the phone or go into a restaurants now that can take, you know, 50% of the number, whatever it is, we've got to do our part uh, so that they're around and we have choices here in the next yeah. few weeks and, and going, going ahead. Yeah, we, we're part of the community, so we want to yes. make sure it's succeeding. So we've at least three days a week uh, bought lunch from a local restaurant. Yeah, uh, and brought it in for our team and encouraging people to do that. Um, so doing everything we can to keep things going. And at State Bank, and I know all the other banks yeah. too, with existing loans, we're doing modifications for payments, right. uh, deferral, right. doing what we can to help get through this, where we can get back to open business. 
Uh, and, um, you know, people feeling comfortable about going back out and spending money. Um, I don't think we're through all this, but um, there's certainly some positive signs of some economic return. Any, and, uh, if we're at the bottom end of the program. Any last words? And how can people find you? Uh, people can call us at any of our branches or uh, find us online at www.statebanknorthwest.com. Okay. Um, we've got our three branches and we're open and you can find Where us. Where are those and, three branches? So in Garfield, where the bank was founded in 1902, okay. still have that branch there. I kind of guessed then, that. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of fun to see all the vault stickers going all the way back uh, yeah. for the inspections on that old vault down there. And uh, then our administrative offices and our valley branch is at uh, 12902 East Sprague out in the valley. And then we've got a Northside branch at 9747 North Nevada. I think that's the right address on that. Okay. But um, right behind um, um, North Point Plaza. So, uh, and then of course, with only three branches, we've got all kinds of technology yeah. of online banking, mobile deposit and all that. that Welcome uh, to the can. digital age, right? Yeah. You have to have it. Yeah. Make it convenient for people to reach you. So. Yeah. Well, Greg, thank you very much for all that you've done for the community. Those, those, uh, 5,500, uh, employees and the effect of them on our community will, will make a difference. Uh, there are probably business owners today that are still in business because of your work and the work of your staff. That means a lot to our community community. And you really are a community bank when you step up to do things like that. So thank you very much. Seriously, so thank you for having me today. Can't All right, good it. to see you again. You too. Thanks, thanks for watching the Pulse of Spokane. Have a good day, everybody. Join us at Paint Night, where you release your inner artist, hosting events in Spokane and surrounding areas. We are the party on wheels and can come to your choice of locations. We specialize in private events, corporate team building, and fundraisers. We are the original Paint Night and want you to join in the fun. Check us out at www.paintnight.com, and we always offer $10 off with the code SPOKANE10. Hi, I'm Dave Lucas, running to be your state senator. I'm a husband, father, and Marine veteran with almost 22 years of experience. I know during this current medical emergency and time of uncertainty, people are concerned. I hope you and your family are doing well. I have the experience, leadership, and training to move us past this crisis. To learn more about me and my campaign for state senator, please follow me on my Twitter, Facebook, or my website at votedavelucas.net. Thank you and stay well. To help you be safe, Washington state law requires you to call 811 two full business days before you plan, for example, to dig, drill, plow, pull from, or pound anything into the ground. Be prepared to provide the operator with the correct address, cross street, and the description of your work. You must mark the dig area with white paint. The operator will inform you of the utilities notified of your impending excavation. Wait for all their marks. Be safe and dig with care. Welcome to Tom Sawyer Country Coffee. Tom Sawyer Country Coffee only roasts the finest organic coffee for our signature blends. Enjoy a cup at our coffee shop and local businesses and organizations across the region. I'm Tom Sawyer and we choose the Pacific Northwest. Thanks for watching. Ask the host a question, recommend a guest, or check out any of our other programs on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com. Sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Homes for You.